Bam! Alright guys, hey look, it's the fall of the Dungeon Guardians, and if you've been around here for a little while and you saw me pledge The Legend of Grimrock 2, then it might look a little familiar. Uh, this game has definitely already come under fire to, to some extent for, like, to the point where some people thought that it was asset flipping uh, Grimrock 2, which does not appear to be the case. It all looks like it's completely original assets, even if there's a visual similarity. And as you might have seen from me playing something like, uh, when I, when I played Lords of the Fallen, for example, and it's similar to Dark Souls, I'm totally cool with playing games that are similar to other games for one reason or another. And since I didn't play this genre back in the olden time, for all I know that they, Grimrock in this game might just be leaning on the same inspirations so heavily that they look similar. Or not. It could go either way. Alright, I went through the settings real quick. We should be ready to go. And hey, it's been a long time since Grimrock 2 came out, so I've been jonesing for a dungeon crawler. Let's see if this game stands on its own. Why would there be eight? There's eight difficulties. <laughs> oh! Alright, I'm trying to find the normal mode, basically, and... There are seven difficulties. Warrior's dead center over here. It says, pick this if you're new to Dungeon Guardians, but not new to tactical combat. You'll get a good challenge. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Stroller literally says, like, you, pr you only need to heal the party to survive. You'll never lose. And Crusader's like, even if you play perfectly, you might not beat the game because this is, like... This is like the bullshit difficulty, which is a weird thing to say in a game. Anyway. Hey. You're the new recruit, right? I was waiting for you. Come on. Let's get you to your new job. Take a last look at the sunlight. You won't be seeing it again for a long time. Hang on. There's a pretty long descent. I hope you're not afraid of heights. Aw, oh, I can't look around at all. And there's motion blur, apparently. You want to be a guardian in that jail down there, right? One second here. Just gonna go ahead and disable... Oopsie. Disable that... motion blur. It's already distracting to me. I'm sorry to ask. My eyes aren't what they used to be. What's your gender? <laughs> A male? Hello, Professor Oak. Oh, I see now. You don't have- I mean, you have- Huh, yeah. What do you mean exactly? Sorry, I meant what is your name? Uh, Keith? That's not how you capitalize. There we go. The convenience of having that kind of name is it fits the time period too. That's a beautiful name. It reminds me of a pig I once had. What? Sorry, nothing. Just rambling of an old man. Don't listen to me. Alright, I'm done listening to you. Don't stay quiet like this. Instead, tell me what's your race. That's... Okay, now we're getting to some problem territory. Also, you said not to talk to me. This guy's got problems. Oh, these have the races. That's a little different. <laughs> what should I be? What a, a dark elf. It could be like a dark elf spellcaster. Let's be a dwarf. Uh, let's be a dwarf. Dwarves are probably hardy. If I'm gonna... I, I, I assume I'll have a party of some kind, but... Making my personal character, I might as well be, like, something kind of tanky, and dwarves are usually a strength bonus. Oh, right. That explains why you're so... Huh. So what? I didn't say anything, did you? Anyway, what kind of guardian are you gonna be in our jail? You can be a guard, an executioner... Uh... A healer, or a mage. A guard, of course. I thought so. You really look like one. You seem to have an awful lot of prejudices. Logically, I figure if you're making the permanent member of your party the fall of Dungeon Guardians, uh, if you're gonna make the permanent member of your character party, you might as well make that the tank so that you always know you have one. Otherwise, you get into some awkward positions as we saw in some of the games I've played in the past. It's a surprisingly loud... Oh, hello. Oh, there you are. A fresh recruit at last. I'm the warden of this prison. I wanted to personally welcome you here. I've heard of all your exploits. Nah, I'm kidding. I have no idea who you are. I just heard the lift coming down. I'm sure you're a nobody like all the other guardians we have here. Come on, follow me. I'll show you to the new guardian quarters. 
let you have a good night's sleep, and first thing tomorrow, I'll get you your assignment. That was fast. Hey, lazy bum, get up. Finally, you're awake. You just slept through the full scale, a full scale riot. That was fast. All the prisoners escaped. All 15 of them. Only 15? Don't ask me how. I was busy trying to stop the fire that burned down my office. You can burn down a place in a stone dungeon? Also, there's a whole elaborate stone dungeon for 15 prisoners? Obviously, something is very wrong here, so I have to evacuate the prison by the lift. But I can't let the prisoners get away. They didn't take the lift, so they must have fled through the dungeon. And you know what? When I see you, I see a leader. A real hero, so I'm promoting you to Chief of the Interception Squad. How lucky are you? It's only your first day and you get responsibilities. Don't worry, I won't let you take back all the prisoners by yourself. You can pick you can pick three other fools, oops, I mean heroes, just like you, amongst our available guardians to accompany you in our our noble quest. This is kind of like the opposite of Grimrock in the story in the story framing, because in that game you're a prisoner. In that game you're basically a prisoner being thrown directly into the game. Uh, into the dungeon as a mur uh, to, to murder you, and in this one you're you're actually trying to escape, escape, uh, trying to capture escaped prisoners. Sounds like 15 boss fights, basically, is what they're setting up. Unless there's bosses that are also monsters, or maybe the mo maybe there's boss monsters and the prisoners are just there and not even bosses. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Obviously, I'm going to customize the party. So they immediately gave us two damage dealers and a, and a healer. Let's see, dark dwarf, dark elf. Dwarf, Elf, interesting. These are both warriors. Obviously I'm roll tank as they paid attention to. Voice is automatic, I'm gonna have to change that anyway. All right, this is the fun part where we get to customize our characters. Interestingly, they didn't give us any sort of rogue variant, did they? We have a mage, a healer, and two warriors, which is a little weird. All right, so, what? 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 No, I want to customize the character. Is that what I do here? Create guardian? These are like exact. This is like pre-existing ones. So it must have chosen them from this party. Interesting. Yeah, I want to create a guardian. Dwarf. Male. Mister? No. Keith. There we go. Um, this class doesn't have any specialization in, uh, matching the current role in the party. Oh, there's Rogue. Alright. Warrior. Protector. As we were going for. Uh, are there any other... That's pretty much the only dwarf image, huh? Oh, it's that one or the one with the, the helmet. I actually like the helmet. Okay, I was highlighting them and they are making sounds. I was a little startled. I kind of find that bottom, that bottom voice is kind of hilarious to be honest. Little, little horrifying how it plays over itself like that. Let's go with three. All right, so that's our protector. Is that all the customization I do? All right, well at least I've got to pick my portrait and protector that time around. So, bam, that guy. So we have the healer, dark elf. I'll probably keep the suggestion there, but I might as well see Orbor, Arthur, and Iris. I feel like I should have like a rogue of some kind, shouldn't I? Seems slightly weird that I don't, so let's maybe even these characters out a little bit more. You're a man at arms. No matching guardian. What if I create a Let's go halfling? Oh yeah, Julian Willpower. Halfling, female, even the stuff out a little bit. <laughs> Defaults to the same name. Um. Shit, what's left? Anya? I think it's. We have. Why is probably the way to go? Rogue. Ooh, all these variants. Assassin is a master of fast and tricky attacks. Built up moves before. Uh, building up moves before finishing their enemies. Duelist is an expert at avoiding and being hit and teasing the enemies. That's probably a good thing for the front row, too. Ranger. The ranger enjoys tracking and killing their target from a distance using either a bow or crossbow. Well, they're going to be a front row character because the other two are both 
spellcasters, so they should probably be in the back. So, tricky, fast and tricky attack versus duelist. Duelist might be the way to go, just to have them be harder to hit. Oh, they're actually that actually is a tank roll. Interesting. Interesting. Although if I have too many tanks, that'd also be a problem. So. Oh, you, and it also says not to be a duelist. All right, assassin. Where is I? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just her face looks stretched, and it's actually bothered. it's actually freaking me out a little bit. Um, maybe this one down here. Their proportions are weird. I guess that's their halfling faces. This one's easier to accept, though. The left one's a little weird. It's automatic. All built-in characters have auto voice. Chooses a voice. Uh, oh, let the game choose a voice so no two characters have the same voice. That's a good idea. I guess they the voices are just the sounds they make when they get are harmed. So that's interesting. All right, we have a female assassin, a female elementalist, a male healer, dark elf, halfling, elf, dwarf. Interestingly, no humans. That's actually kind of a fun idea. Iris, Anya, Orbor, and Keith. I think I'm overall happy with this one, since it looks like that's about as much as you can customize your characters from the get-go. Main character, you are the soul of this guardian. Click on another guardian's portrait to change your main character. So you can change the main character. I'll stick with that one. Alright. Good to go. Just gotta customize that really quick. There we go, just took a moment to quickly customize. There we go, that feels more natural to me. I don't know, Q and E feel like more natural strafing buttons to me. Alright, so this is immediately Grimrocky a little bit. Although, there's definitely more humans and, you know, characters around. I guess humans is the wrong word. Let's look at our starting skills. So, our rogue has Swift Knife. No target, so you can't do it unless there's a target. It's an instant attack with a cooldown, range of 10 meters. Damage type shadow, interesting. Streak climax, consumes all streak points. So you need to build up a streak and then use that. There's a magical knife damaging the target for eight hit points. The damage is increased by 20% for each streak point. Probably like combo points in WoW or something like that. Dreadful jab, uh, cooldown 4.8 seconds. It takes about over a second to use though. Melee weapon attack, uh, cutting strike that damages target for 11 hit points, grants one streak point. So you use this a few times and that gives you the ability to give this finisher, basically. These requ these weapons, are this attack requires fist, dagger, sword, axe, mace. So you can use it with anything, basically, and this one requires nothing specific, so I can use most weapons at the moment, but probably will get more specialized over time. Inventory currently appears to have nothing in it. Does everyone have their own inventory? Uh, it says 20 out of 66 kilograms, so it looks like there's a shared inventory in this game. Not gonna be too bothered by that, it's kinda nice not having to navigate them all. So my tank. Kick. Instant. Cooldown 20 seconds. Melee. Interrupts the target's current ability. Noticeably threatening. So it probably gives, uh, your character attention. Thunderclap. Uh, 5 meter range. Physical. Creates a wave of energy that greatly threatens all surrounding enemy- all surrounding enemies. There we go. It even came from the left a little bit to show the fact that he's on the left. So I have an AoE threatening attack, and I have this. And I assume they just, uh, get, yeah, I assume that, that if I do this, they'll just start engaging in normal combat. It'd be weird if they didn't actually attack. Um, and this is kind of a nice, nice breakdown. I have a tank and healer on the left, and the two damage dealers on the right. It's a good visual distinction. My healer has regrowth, 15 mana out of 105. Uh, three second cast, heals the target for 36 hit points over- oh, it's a heal over time, that's noteworthy. So it's a- it's a strong healing spell, but it takes a long time. This one is instant, costs more mana though. Alright, so you can conserve mana by casting early and setting up a heal over time at the beginning of a fight, for example, to cataract incoming damage, but if you have to heal them in the moment, you're gonna have to spend more mana to do it instantly. Finally, we have our elementalist, uh... Sends a bolt of ice that damages the target for 19 hit points. It costs 2.5 seconds to cast. I can't do it right now, outside of combat, apparently. Uh, cooldown's only 6 seconds, but it costs me 18 out of 125. Other one is Scorch. Uh, other, they, both they both take about 3 seconds to cast and have about 6 second cooldowns. 
Scorch has t slightly more range, obviously, frost and fire elements. Same mana cost. Scorch is the target for 11 hit points, plus 12 hit points over 3 seconds. So it technically does... Ba -ba -ba, 4 more damage, but it takes a few seconds to happen. But yeah, you can toggle... You can do the two of them back to back over and over again if you want to. Since the cooldowns of them are 6 seconds, that means that it gives you just enough time to cast the other spell, basically. Let's get started. Anything around here? Any s oh, wait, obviously there's just a lever. Hey, sir. I guess it's time we introduce ourselves. I'm Orbor, and I'm a healer. I'm convinced we'll succeed in our mission. Hello, I'm Iris. I'm a damage dealer. I hope... I sure hope we'll make it. Howdy, I'm Anya. I'm a damage dealer. Oh, and we're dead meat. Huh. Hi, guys. I'm Keith. I'm a tank. And I'm your leader in this operation, I guess. Also, we talk about ourselves in the terms of RPG classes, which is a little weird to do. Anyway... If you follow my, my lead, I'm sure we'll get out of here alive. We all trust you. Okay, let's go now. We don't have much time. Hey boss, you'll have to lower that lever to exit the room. Oh no, a tutorial about levers? That was a little silly. Alright, just wanted to check really quick, so a quick save is F5. Alright. Save, game save, to, yeah, we read Lever. Anything around here? Alright, time to explore. Spacebar? Whoa. But that, okay, let's learn about controls really quick, actually. We need to learn what we're allowed to do really quick. That's the wrong menu. Um, options, controls, bind keys. All right, moving, other stuff that doesn't matter. Modifier, inventory is I, talent tree is K, there's a talent tree. Dial, dialogue log is L, dialogue log. Um, map is M. Escape is escape. Interesting. That's is that how I escape combat? I assume. So good. Good to know. Tab is cycle target. M is map. What is spacebar? Spacebar is active. Okay, that's the pause. Interesting. Good to know. So now we know that you can pause with the, with the spacebar, which is what this is apparently, where it goes freezy. And here's our map. Still no map found for this level. Interesting. Oopsie. I've a. Uh, I'm sorry, can I get rid of these? There we go. Accidentally making notes there. Sounds like I have to actually discover a map myself then, which is interesting. So we don't have an automatically populating one. Can I grab torches at all? Or are they fixed to walls? You cannot grab torches. Alright, good to know. Let's run around a little bit. That's the armory, or what's left of it. Unfortunately, there's nothing left that's useful for us, so no need to lose time here. Oh yeah, so that's where all of our equipment was. Good to know that it's all gone. There's nothing natural about this fire. I'm afraid so. We should move on. Let's just go running through it. Warden office. Oh, that's the office. That, that's the, 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 the other guy's poor office. Looks like it could hold something. So you can put a torch there. Ooh, a sword. So it would I would lose damage if I picked this up, basically. Is what that's saying to me. Yeah, guard sword level 1. The quality is garbage. It's an awful guard sword. It does less damage overall. Or one damage, which is not a huge amount. So yeah, this is just an empty area. Of course I'm still gonna look around when they tell me not to. Could have cool stuff in it for all I know. I don't trust them. RPGs have been lying to me for as long as I've been playing them. Alright, let's try the left side next. All the prisoners escaped. We have to hurry if we want to catch them before they find their way out of the dungeon. Or before they get eaten by some of the creatures roaming around. If we're worried about them escaping, if they get themselves killed, I feel, like, I feel like that wouldn't be that big of a problem. They're the ones that ran away. That's the main cell where most of the prisoners were piled up. If you want to look around or up and down, right and click and drag your mouse. To move around, you can also use the numpad keys. Alright. Can I dest- Oh, I can't- I can't kick the uh, barrels to destroy them. Alright. Oh. Hear any hearing a zombie or something nearby. Alright, so immediately we are noticing a few differences between this and Grimrock, of course. Definitely less ability to attack things in the environment, which, you know, that just means there probably isn't a reason to. Hello, freaky ramp. So something clearly is over here because I'm hearing it. That's a skeleton right there. Hello, skeleton. Damn, one skeleton roamed to uh, roam to our side of the rift. Okay, to attack it, either left-click on it, and then click this two, the two-sword icon, 
or by right clicking on it. Uh, before attacking, be sure to have all four of us selected. If not, click the four dot icon. It will toggle between the last custom selection and the full group selection. All right. Note that the port uh, selected party members have gold corners around on their portrait. So right now everyone's selected, so if I right click, we're all going to attack him, which is shown by the, the fact that there's a bunch of swords around him now. There we go, let's, let's kick him. Yeah. Stabby stab. He's dead. He's super dead. I also used the wrong finisher, but you know, it, it happens. Alright. There's a zombie corpse in the ground, or a skeleton. Any of those things move at all? Nope. Want to check around. Looks like the Warden's plan didn't go as he hoped. Nope, it didn't. It doesn't change our orders, though. And it surely doesn't change our path. Only one exit left out of this death trap. Okay, let's go. Alright, so... The Warden tried to run away and leave the problem to us. Now he's dead. Because of that. So, I guess we're good to go, then. Uh, we have to find our way through this entire dungeon, round up the prisoners, and then probably escape the way that they were trying to plan escape, because... not much of anywhere else to go at the moment. Skeleton's gonna come at me? I'm gonna take a look around then if you're not gonna come straight at me. No surprises around here? Did I momentarily get something on the side of my screen? Like an interface thing? Oh well. Hey guys! Oh goodness me! Jeez! There are more of them. Okay, now you may want to press space during overheated fights. So it'll pause the game and you won't be- and you will be able to carefully select the abilities you want to use. You can queue up to three abilities for each party member. When there's no abilities in queue, nor any ability ready, the default basic attack is used. There's a global cooldown for abilities of six seconds. This means between two abilities, you usually have one or two default. I will use it will usually have one or two default attacks. Damage scores shown in white are from basic attacks. The ones in yellow are from abilities. Scores are bigger for critical damages. Abilities of each party member are on their left if their portrait is on the left. On the right, their portrait's on the right. So currently, each party member has two abilities. We'll get more with experience. Um, I don't know why they're explaining that. To, it's weird that they're talking about the game mechanics in first person. That's slightly weird. All right, so queue up some attacks. So I can pick all four characters and hit attack if I want to. Let's go after the guy on the left. They seem to be the same character, so I don't think it's mattering. Okay, they're they're swinging at me. So if I kick him, he'll stop swinging. And maybe let's start queuing up some deadful. Some dreadful jabs. One, two, three. Interesting. It actually shows up as one, two, three as the series of things you're gonna do. Do thunder clap after the after the kick. Okay. And maybe I'll queue up a heal on the tank just to see how that goes. And you can cast Scorch since it's a damage over time spell, followed by an ice bolt. That's probably pointless a little bit. Ah. Uh, We'll let it happen. Alright, well he's quite down, and my party's doing just fine. So for the moment, I'm not too super concerned. Let's do a finishing attack. Next. Oh, it's over. Alright. 12 experience. Good. It seems you're getting the hang of it. Now you should learn to use me as a tank, which means my job is to make all enemies attack me. To do so, use my special abilities. And me as the healer. I'll have to keep the tank alive, and of course the damage dealers as well. When things get dirty... <clears throat> sorry. When things get dirty and enemies attack them. When an enemy attacks a party member, their portrait will get highlighted in red. If the enemy attacked by a party member is close to attacking them back, the member's portrait will be highlighted in orange. Oh, so if I'm about to be attacked, it'll highlight that character in orange, telling me to, to defend that character next. Interesting. So we have more- we definitely have a more, uh, advanced combat system in play. Although it does- it is static, though. You're kind of standing in place and picking up- picking moves. We'll see whether or not I like that or the dancing around the enemies like lunatic method more. Hello? Oh, hey, buddy. How you doing? Alright, right. Aha! Interesting. She'll actually default use spells. Aha! <laughs> I can avoid engaging in combat, this is great! That's great. 
That's great that I can trigger ranged attacks and just run away. Oh, I'm gonna be doing that a lot. Alright, um, do, do you heal over time on, at all? Or do you only heal when I cast on you? It does look like mana comes back on its own, so if I just do this... I can start healing you over time. And it seems that the mana comes back just fine, because I, I have 19 right now. Yep, 105. Alright, so mana comes back, it looks like health doesn't. These damn skeletons reset the dungeon's automatic defenses. We're gonna have to uh, have a hard time passing through all these mechanisms. I think we should start with this lever. Okay, please don't... Is there, is there like a disable... Ah, uh, I shouldn't do that, because the game has its own unique mechanics. I just want to disable its obvious stuff if I could. Like, levers open things. Congratulations. Does that lead back to the same room, I assume? Yeah, so there was no path decision yet. That was a uh, split up between two of the same place. Oh, skeletons are coming. Hello. Can't hit him from here. <laughs> oh, I see what's going on here. You're gonna try to trap me, aren't you? So I'm gonna open. I'm gonna open this lever, and he's gonna engage with me immediately. Aha! Range attacks. Kick him. Fire. Kick. Hey, he's dead. He's dead and we're healthy. Those are my favorite two things. Go ahead and restore our... I did a re... Ah, oh, I did an instant heal on accident. My bad. Spe ranged spellcasting, go! Yay! That's fun to do. Alright, they're going down nice and fast. It definitely pays to prepare those, uh... ranged casts and just do some damage before they get to you. Which is actually a mechanic they haven't told me about, but I figured it out. I'm- I got this. I think there's a skeleton over here. Nope. Oh, what the- oh. That's a good weapon. I wonder who lost it there. Click and drag the- it to the bag icon to put it in the party inventory. Then click on the bag icon to click on the- and click on the uh, member's portrait if you want that, to use this weapon. Then drag it to the weapon icon on their hand or right click it. Give it to me. I think this weapon would suit me well. Alright, well, you don't have to worry about not knowing how to play this game, I guess. Bag icon, there it is. I was a little confused because I thought it was somewhere else a moment ago. Okay. So. Hello? It's better for you. You can dual wield, probably, because you're a rogue, right? Oops. Bam. Alright, so this one is Combat Knife of the Apprentice, and this one is the Short Sword. Uh, damage 7, damage 2. I assume dual wielding is good for her, probably. Let's see, this one gives her plus six awareness. Interesting. And awareness is a stat that does something. Um, resistances, defense. Ooh. Between block, armor, parry. Yeah, she has a decent chance of avoiding da damage so far, but we're gonna have to increase that if we can. Uh, awareness. Increases spell power, mana, and expertise. All right, I know what two of those are, but expertise, what is, Let's find expertise on this list if we can. Expertise. Uh, lowers the chance to be parried. Interesting. Still, this thing gives you more... If awareness gives you more mana, maybe this is actually a better thing to give to one of the spellcasters instead. Ah, uh, you can use it as a weapon though, so we might as well let you have that for now. Oh, lever. That was a little bit redundant, but okay. Oh, Jesus. That's a good bunch to fight. Be sure all of them are attacking me. Start by using Thunderclap and then try to under- I know, I know how to tank. It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Then try to interrupt the uh, first target's attack with kick. Then use Thunderclap again as soon as this cooldown's over. To check all this, put the mouse cursor on my portrait and all enemies that are attacking me will be highlighted in purple. Interesting. My current target will be highlighted in pink if they're attacking me and in red if they're not. That's a lot to keep keep in mind. Each enemy will be will always attack the most threatening party member for them. Uh, each damaging attack threatens its target according to its damage points. The tank has special abilities that produce extra threat. My, and my healing spells will also threaten all enemies around them. So the tank really needs to catch uh, to catch and keep their attention. So I won't be getting attacked all the time. Interesting that the game seems to man make it mandatory that you have a correct party composition. I wonder if that's something you can turn off. So, Thunderclap, as they meant to point it out. Followed by Kick. I can't follow up a Kick after that. 
Oh yeah, it's instant, so you don't really queue that up, do you? Alright, so... Might as well... So if you highlight some- oh yeah, look, they're all highlighted- they all highlight in purple when I highlight him. It's faint, but it's there. Good to know. Alright, let's queue up some of these, uh... These particular attacks. We're just gonna nuke the crap out of this character, basically. And I'm gonna do a heal over time on our tank. To prepare them accordingly. There we go. That's the first target down. Target this next one over here. So over here you can actually see the, uh, what is it, what's it called? Streak points. They are, they, they, the rogue currently has one down there. Um, heal over time is already set on this character, right? Let's do a heal over time on our rogue, because they're probably going to take damage regardless of what I do. Cast another one of those nice fire spells. Just nuke the crap out of some enemies. There we go. Are you still properly focused on the tank? You are. Gonna have to actually heal the tank, because he's taking more damage than I would otherwise hope for him to do. Targeting this character, let's do... Oh cool, you can right-click to cancel your action, good to know. So let's do... Yeah, let's do a, a swift knife to use up my streak. Because I could use that little boost there. There's fewer enemies now, so we should have less incoming damage regardless. Let's do an instant heal on the tank, because they pretty much need it at this point. And queue up some dreadful jabs. There we go. Everyone get your new target. Their tank is mostly nice and healed. Mostly. There we go. Drop anything for me? Oh, not this time. I'll teach you who needs loot in the future. Alright, that'll heal up my tank over time, so he'll be good. Alright, I kinda like the combat system. This is this is alright. Is that a thing I can click on? No. I'm doing I'm doing a little bit of of a pixel hunting Grimrock style. Hello. Escape means death. Go back to your cell. Whoopsie. So much for that. Oh, hello. Whoa, this one looks tough. By the way, if a party member loses all their health points, they'll stay unconscious until the end of the fight. It's not possible to heal them or revive them during that time. Interesting. They stay unconscious till the end of the fight. Implying that they will stop being unconscious after the fight, which is somewhat unexpected. Interesting. Fire attack. You have a couple dreadful jabs followed by a swift knife. Oh, it's instant crap. Cancel that. All right, it's already happening. All right, well. So if it's instant, you can't queue it up that way. Let's see. Gotta wait a little longer to be able to heal properly. Let's do a kick. And an instant heal to help out the tank. Actually, no, the tank's doing okay at the moment. Stack an extra heal on the rogue for the moment. Ice spell. We're good. We're good. I might, I might be over planning the fights a little bit. But yeah, being able to throw a heal over time on two characters is handy. So we have two different directions to go in. I have to be really careful about trying to remember where I'm going because there's no auto-generating map. Unless I want to start manually drawing one. Which I don't think the game itself supports, but I could technically do it by hand, but that would be very time-consuming. Hello, what are you? A health vial. Should have expected that. A potion that heals for 50 hit points. The potency of all healing potions is lowered for 20 seconds after use, and this lowering can stack up to three times. Huh. So I use it, I assume that means that I use it at once and then other potions are lowered. I briefly thought that it was a reusable item, but that's probably not what, they're, what they mean by that. Oh, pressure plate. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm just gonna go ahead and target you. And just sort of keep my distance a bit. Yay! I love that you do that. I can still Grimrock this shit. You can't stop me. Okay, they can kind of stop me because they're kind of crowding me now. Alright. Interesting. You can totally run around like a lunatic and fight them that way. Let's do a Thunder Crush or whatever it's called. Um, Thunder Clap. You can queue up a few, a few attacks and you can Fireball. Actually, you should probably Fireball that one. Are they all attacking him now, or... Uh, whoop. Ah. We're, we'll be fine. There we go. He's, he's down. Fireball? Sweet fireballs. Alright. Can I, can I stack that heal? 36 hit points? Nope, it just restarts the heal. Just sort of testing out a few things. Let's help out our mage also. 
All right, looks like enemies don't drop stuff very often. It looks like loot might be environmental in nature. So this closes when you get off of it. So I'm gonna have to grab this rock. Hello, rock. Which I can just drag around in real time. Ta-da! I know how to puzzle. What's that thing over there? It's a it's a bolster or a ledge. Look here. This one's for me. I'm I'm sure for sure. It'll help me protect the party against all enemies. I like protecting the party. Put that in the bag. There we go. And click on my tank. There we go. I have a shield for the first time. This shield gives you three strength and an armor rating of 161, which is a number I don't have much concept for, but I'm sure it's good. All right, cool. Looks like a dead end over here. Probably bad guy up here. Hello. <laughs> Yay! I love this. It's fun. You can't get me. You ain't the boss of me. Aha! One of them's down already. Take that. Oh, I have to, I have to select my new target. Whoops. Ow. Okay, they got me. But, uh, at least I took out one of them before they started the fight. So we're gonna go ahead and cast Thunderclap. Actually, let's, let's talk- we'll do a kick also, because they're attacking me. Um, Fireball. Cast a heal over time on the tank, like usual. Queue up some attacks with the rogue. Should be good to go for the moment. There we go. I got rid of some of them at least, which is probably worthwhile. Alright, um... Gonna have, let's probably cast... What's the eyeball mean? Mean that I'm in danger? Cast a heal over time on myself. An ice bolt. We doing good at the moment? Did I accidentally just switch targets? No, I didn't. Okay. For a moment there, I thought that I had lost track of who I was attacking or something. Um... You stack up a few more dreadful jabs. There we go. Down to the last target. Um... Cast- uh, heal over time. We'll just replenish that on the- on the tank. And you can do a finishing move. There we go. Should be good to go, basically. 12 experience. Hey, check this. They dropped something. That looks interesting. I'm sorry, what did they drop? What did they drop? Oh, there it is. Holy crap, there's loot that's that small? I'm sorry, that might be... That might be something you want, might want to look into. That's... A little scary how missable that seemed to be. I only I never would have seen that if the game hadn't been like, They dropped something! Yeah, that tiny ring over there, of course. What else do you think it was? 